Now, when did you begin to notice in your own life, not, not from the television or from news accounts, that this black-white divide your parents and grandparents had described was permeable, was movable, that you could break out of it if you, if you tried? When did that become apparent to you? It, it took a while, and what's interesting as a child, I have to remember, being black uh, and being poor wasn't a bad thing because mm -hmm. we didn't know that we were black and poor. Uh -huh. <laughs> there was no uh, disability. I remember uh, on Saturday mornings, uh, uh, Reverend Robinson, whose church was right there in the community, would come, having gone through the bakeries in town, mm -hmm. Uh, picked up stale donuts, no bread, and he would almost like uh, uh, lead us. This this group of children uh, that we would we, he was the Pied Piper. We would mm. follow him to his church. He'd give us free stale donuts. We didn't uh, know they were stale. They were right. free and they were good. Right. And he would talk about God is good, and we would mm. go to church with him Sunday. I remember Moneyback Lee, a black entrepreneur on the corner, uh, who had uh, a shop. Uh, he it was a cleaners. But he sold Yule's jewelry, uh, uh, other artifacts, things that he claimed were originals, and they clearly were things that the whites on the north side of town had tossed, tossed out of their house. Mm -hmm. He picked them up on Saturday and sold them mm -hmm. to our families. He had a credit, uh, informal credit system. Uh, there was a Pine Cone Inn uh, mm -hmm. where folks would uh, have dinner, play cards, uh, dance. And so the black community was functioning, and it seemed fine. It didn't occur to me that uh, there was something different until I went to uh, elementary school and the first time I was called a nigger. Mm -hmm. uh, that made uh, it a difference to me that, uh-oh, uh, I am mm -hmm. something, and that was used in a pejorative and negative yeah. way. But at the same time, I knew that it was a chance of opportunity because I started seeing that in the classes, whether it's science class or math class, that I was the only African American, but I was there competing mm -hmm. with the top students uh, in my environment. I started seeing small progress. Uh, Sam Pipes having a job as a postal worker, which was mm -hmm. an important change in Merced. I saw Bert Alexander having a little newspaper shop on the north side of town where blacks didn't normally mm -hmm. uh, 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 visit. I saw Julia Bill, the NAACP representative, sitting with whites, whites talking about issues of civil mm -hmm. rights and, and racial justice. Because I could see the doors start to open and I saw my first black teachers uh, in elementary school who obviously had, been, uh, had, had gone to college, got an education, and they were saying, we've made it, you too can make it. So I started seeing those small signs that there was an opportunity for racial progress. And, and these examples, the, the entrepreneur, the, the postal worker, the NAAC, all these lifted aspirations for you. Absolutely. Um, uh, th th they were lifted in the sense that here were role models, here were mm -hmm. people who were enormously successful given what I knew before, uh, that they had an education, uh, they had real talents, they had real jobs. Uh, they had uh, confidence uh, and respect and character that was extremely important.